Here is another installment of the Elector editorial webinar series. Today, again, at my side, Matthias Clausen. With me here also, Jens Nickel, our editor-in-chief. So it's not laptop time. No. But, but we are sitting in exactly the same position. Yep. Same location. <laughs> yep. Uh, Matthias, what, what's the subject of today? Uh, oh, I would uh, would look to ask you the same, but today's subject is wireless wonders, a look at BLE and more. So Bluetooth Classic, Bluetooth Low Energy, and the ESP32. And Bluetooth Low Energy and Bluetooth is a topic that is quite interesting, I think. We have that featured in the current issue. And we want to talk a little bit today about this uh, topic and give you some coding ideas and maybe some hints for your yes. upcoming projects. So Yes, and here is the current edition. That's the September, October if you... edition. Yeah, I have to switch the cameras. Yes, here you can see it's uh, currently available at the Houston sales, for example, in Germany. Um, yeah, for the people living in other countries, they can order it um, in our sh store if you are not a member. Um, all the members have it already in the post box. Um, yeah, that's uh, our, our big subject was wireless and wireless. Uh, if I ask Matthias, of course, Wi-Fi comes to our mind, but Wi-Fi, it's not all. Matthias, what are the advantages of Bluetooth? Well, let's go through yep. the slides. We yep. have prepared some. So, um, yeah, today's host, I think, um, introduction for those of you who are new to this webinar format. Um, uh, yeah, Jens Nickel, our editor in chief. So, in every Electron magazine, the um, first, first, first or second page is the editorial words from you. It's the third page. Third page. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Every two months, a new small introduction to the magazine. Also, you are responsible to make it work that it's at the end a magazine. Yes, but of course, with a big team of editors and external journalists. Yep. And besides that, you're also doing some electronic projects from time to time. From time to time, but at the moment, I have to admit, I have no time anymore. It's a pity, but... I hope it will change, um, maybe next year, because I'm very interested, for example, in artificial intelligence. I really would like to do something with this. Yeah, and um, yeah, for me, yeah, writing articles and doing some development, that's sort of daily business. But besides that, talking of videos, um, as you said, um, this is the same location we use for laptops. So once a month, we do a YouTube live stream. Mm -hmm. um, you can go to electormagazine.com slash elector laptop if you like to see that kind of video. Um, it's a less techy talk um, where you can also contribute if you like to, or if you just need some entertainment for the evening, feel free to join. Um, but let's start with today's topic, uh, topics. Uh, that's Bluetooth and Bluetooth to energy. What is it? Um, why did we choose an ESP32 for it? Uh, short introduction into Bluetooth low energy. So you will find the full story in the magazine. Um, some practical examples. So we will show a Bluetooth low energy server that is able to give you data and um, Bluetooth Low Energy Client that's able to display data. And as a final add-on, as a bonus trick, the ESP32 as a low-cost uh, Bluetooth classic speaker. Audio. Audio speaker. Uh, yeah. But for this time, for this day, um, we have a message from our sponsor. And our sponsor, if you can go to camera two. Uh, where is it? Um, this webinar is sponsored by IOTIS, supplier for non-code wireless solution for embedded systems. 
um, they are tap and link, this little beauty. Um, Primer instantly adds NFC, EFU communication, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi to your electronics design so that you can create your human machine interface as mobile apps. With tap and link and their automatic app generation, no coding or expertise is required. Tap and link primer is available now at the Electro store or at other IoTIS resellers. To get your link, uh, visit, visit the script you can see in the slide. So that's that. That's for today's sponsor. So it's really quite fitting for the webinar. Mm -hmm. Um, gives an easy upgrade pass for existing devices. So if you have something like that and need to do a retrofit or something in mm. that area, may have a look. And right. it's, it's quite an interesting system. If you ever have the chance to watch it on uh, some fair, mm. um, I would recommend to or let, no. let, watch a demo by, by these guys. Yeah. <clears throat> And also for today, I mean, we have five ebooks, uh, get together, develop your own Bluetooth low energy applications that you can win. Um, our team that is also looking in the chat will give you the instruction on how to do that. So look in the chat, Electra team, your action is now required. And um, yeah, you can win one of five ebooks and for that just go to electromagazine.com slash elector minus webinar minus giveaway and you need a code word for that and that will be given somewhere along this webinar in the chat so have an eye on that our colleagues will give you that one soon so um let's go to the bluetooth topic so yeah, my question still remains, why Bluetooth? We have so such an excellent Wi-Fi, which can handle every communication, each communication. Why should someone start with Bluetooth, which is a little bit more difficult? Definitely, it's it's more difficult to, to use than an ESP32 and, and, and Wi-Fi mm -hmm. mode. Um, but there are advantages where Bluetooth, or at least Bluetooth LE, really sticks out in, in, in respect to, to what it can do for its purpose than what Wi-Fi could do. And we will come to that. Mm -hmm. um, we have to look first at Bluetooth Classic. So that's mm -hmm. what it started with. Um, Bluetooth Classic um, started with 1.0. And the best thing about that one was the products were not interoperable. So one product from one vendor with another one didn't talk. So they came up later with um, version uh, 1.2, and uh, that's what most um, yeah yeah things got adopted to. So you had up to 721 kilobits data transfer rate. That's not much, but the intention was a, a short data transfer. And um, yeah, you may also know the um, host controller interface, the the free wire UART one mm -hmm. that is sticking around in embedded systems, mainly may someone already stumble about it. And for Bluetooth Classic, the highest um, thing you can or could get um, is <clears throat> uh, free megabit mm -hmm. with the um, Bluetooth 2.1 uh, plus EDR extended uh, data rate. And yeah, also included some security add-ons to the protocol that was not there in the first place. Um, but Bluetooth Classic itself, um, yeah, first the stack or the, the specifications had a few security issues in the mm -hmm. past. Mm -hmm. And somewhere that, yeah, in interesting things like um, mm -hmm. with implementation faults, you could uh, do interesting things, for example, with the car stereo. So, yeah, that said, um, there's also a little bit more to talk about, and that's... Um, with Bluetooth, there also is Bluetooth Low Energy, or what mm -hmm. we now know as BLE. And BLE is mostly used on smart devices like uh, watches, um, tracking computer, GPS devices, uh, your mobile phone, um, your thermometer. Yeah. Barbecue thermometer is one nice example for that. And 
Um, what it does and, and how it works, it uses the same frequency band as Wi-Fi. Okay. That's where things get interesting. So if you have a Wi-Fi and a Bluetooth device that's sharing the same frequency band, it means that they, if they are built in a, in a good way, that they will listen before they talk. So they will check if the channel is free. Otherwise, they would just talk into each, each other's communication. And on um, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled devices, so where you have both transmission technologies with one or two antennas, you have in co uh, coexisting modes, so that the Wi-Fi chip knows when the Bluetooth chip wants to talk and vice versa in that respect. So yeah, um, that's to, to avoid the disturbance you had. Mm -hmm. With the 1.0, 1.1, 1 1.2 devices, you could easily uh, make Wi-Fi connections unusable. Mm -hmm. Get enough older Bluetooth devices into one area and any Wi-Fi transfer is gone for good. Um, yeah, we're talking about Bluetooth and uh, Bluetooth Low Energy. And one thing to, to know about that um, Bluetooth and Bluetooth Low Energy are, in, in that respect, two separate things. Okay. So Bluetooth, now known as Bluetooth Classic, and Bluetooth Low Energy, where the, they have the same Bluetooth in it from the um, specification, uh, are not something that's just built on top of each other. They are um, <clears throat> yeah, like family members. So, before we come to to uh, some projects, um, do you think that it's worth to uh, um, to deal with with Bluetooth Classic, um, or can can we focus um, saying as normal developers on Bluetooth Low Energy and leave Bluetooth Classic aside? Um, there are a few areas where you still have to deal with it because mm -hmm. it's it's already there. Usually, mm -hmm. if you have an, an, an more or less modern vehicle, there will be some kind of Bluetooth Classic connection just to synchronize your phone, um, streaming audio, mm -hmm. connect audio to it. So that's some areas where you have to deal with it. If you can start on a green field mm -hmm. and <clears throat> want to be or don't have to transmit huge amounts of data, Bluetooth Low Energy is something that's really sticking out at that point in terms of, of power per, per bit or per transmission used. What's the situation at the smartphone side? Um, do most of the smartphones also have Bluetooth low energy? BLE is quite, is, is quite common, yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's uncommon not to have it mm -hmm. because most of your, of your fitness tracker, smartwatches, mm -hmm. stuff like that will do BLE for a good reason. Okay. Um, as said, um, your, your device can operate in really low power. Um, the bit rates are good. We have two megabit on, on the data channel, Okay. Uh, raw data channel. Um, the interesting thing is with Bluetooth Classic, Bluetooth Classic is um, built as a point-to-point -point connection. Yes. So with BLE, you got the ability to build mesh networks. So even okay. if if your if your target is not in range, you have other BLE devices that join that mesh to do a repeating of your package from A to B. So that's a quite nice advantage of that technology. That's not within classic. So even for for buildings and smart stuff like that, you can see why BLE is definitely more likely to be used. And um, BLE 5.3 is coming up. We had a small demo at the Embedded World from Monolic. Yeah. And they demonstrated AuraCast. Mm -hmm. AuraCast is a way to do audio broadcast with Bluetooth Low Energy. That's something BLE currently doesn't do with audio. And with 5.3 and AuraCast, we got point-to-point -point audio. That's one option. And we got point-to-multipoint, like radio that's, station. Uh, that's a thing which Bluetooth really was missing. And also Bluetooth. lower latency. Yeah. So. Yeah. The time your audio needs to be processed, transmitted, and then mm -hmm. decoded and mm -hmm. played back also gets lower mm -hmm. in a way that it's really, really usable. And there are many, many uh, yeah fields where this comes really, really handy. What's the situation with this Aura cast? Are there already devices on the market or um, just modules? And, and uh... it's I haven't seen devices yet. Mm -hmm. they, they will definitely come. Um, Next year, maybe. Uh, Windows are also now going to, to if possible, update their um, Bluetooth Low Energy stacks. Mm -hmm. 
And yeah, we will see when chips with AuraCast included will come to the market, but okay. there are already Nordic chips that support it, and I think others will follow soon. So we'll definitely be a subject for Elector 2023. Definitely. I mean, I mean, even for exhibitions, um, just think of a stage where you have a speaker, a microphone, where you don't need loudspeakers, but you can just grab your phone, connect to that stage, just say, I want to hear or listen to that conversation. That's interesting. Plug yes. in your earplugs mm -hmm. and, and listen to it. I mean, it doesn't have to be noisy any longer. Mm -hmm. So, or even in, in really, really big halls. Um, you can can listen to to audio or specialized broadcast messages. Mm -hmm. uh, airport, for example, it's also something shown here. Like if you want uh, to have all the news for Forgate uh, Twenty, where your flight is, mm -hmm. just use that. Mm -hmm. Connect to the broadcast stream for Gate Twenty. Get all the announcements. That's mm -hmm. just for your gate. Like your flight is cancelled or due to whatever. Go to Gate Twenty One. That's fine, and that's really really useful and really really nice. And also for the receiver and transmitter, it means they don't have to waste as much energy as if they are using a permanent Wi-Fi data exchange. Yes. So you you, you just have to listen. Mm -hmm. And that's that's really interesting. So there's no two-way communication needed for that. One. Sounds cool, yes. Yep. So um, as I said, point to point uh, with BLE, uh, also mesh networks possible. Yeah. And as I said the audio stuff. That's something. I'm really looking forward into. There are many, many nice um, application fields to, to do that. Um, yeah. And the interesting question, why an ESP32? Why not a Nordic chip? And it's quite simple why that was chosen, because many of us have somewhere an ESP32 lying around. So that's something that was, at that point, good available, um, sold in, in many, 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 many units. And there's a whole family. And there's one interesting thing. Bluetooth Classic, I think, is only supported um, on the ESP32, the first one. I'm not sure about the S2, the, the later, the second one. And um, yep, also um, the Classic support is, has been dropped from the recent ones. So they are definitely focusing on low energy. Um, transmission range with the ESP32 modules and the, the integrated antennas. Um, well, usually with BLE, you get 10, maybe 12 to 15 meters, depending on how the walls are located and, and uh, built. So it's, it's really short range. It's not, if you have line of sight and if you, if you tweak the antennas below, uh, or above the, the uh, allowed limits, you can get more distance but usually 10 to 50 meters is really short distance communication. So not that far um, intended for indoor use or, even, or short distance communication between a watch and a smartphone or a an, temperature sensor and something like that. So, yeah. Um, also, with the ESP32, it's mostly used usually for Wi-Fi. So Bluetooth or Bluetooth LE is not used that often. So it's quite nice to look into that one. Um, yeah, and as I said, you have many generations, many variants, and usually you will, if somebody is doing microcontrollers, you will usually find an ESP32 somewhere. Uh, <coughs> the easy to use was an asterisk. <clears throat> it highly depends on how stable the, the software development <coughs> work actually is and if there are any bugs left. But the good thing is you can use the Arduino compatible framework and use your Arduino ID, and that's something we're going to do later. So. Um, let's talk about the BLE server for a moment. Um, how is it built up and how is data exchanged? So it's not like Wi-Fi where you have an IP address and just transmit data to a certain point and there's a certain service that will handle the stuff. It's working a little different. So <clears throat> the BLE server itself has a BLE service unify identi unique identifier. Um, this unique identifier, yeah, see it like 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 a like a franchise sign mm -hmm. of, of an of an food offering service, whatever you like it. Um, so um, you can look for that as a client, 
And within these uh, BLE service uh, identifier are the identifier for the characteristics. So what, uh, what in, in terms of restaurant, what would be actually on the menu dish? Okay. So, for, um, yeah. And <clears throat> yeah, within these unique identifier for the characters are then uh, characteristics are then the actual values you can request, okay. you can write to, and you can get notified. And the notification is something we will use. So, so for example, you can these these gray boxes. They could this could be some two sensor values, for, for the temperature and the humidity, for example. If that's something you like to read, yes, yes, you can also have at that point things where you can write to if you're allowed to. Okay. You can, so they they. Uh, so for example, two motor positions or something. Yes. Mm. Um, and you can have notifications like mm. um, connect to it, say, okay, I'm interested in that stuff, mm. and if anything changes, give me an update. Mm. That's also working. Mm -hmm. And I said that's what we are using here in this example later on to. Uh, transport uh, temperature values and can you choose these these keys on your own or do you uh, partially yes okay it must be unique that's the uh, yeah should yeah there are a few things to to keep in mind mm -hmm. with the advertisement the, the length of the there's a given length you have to keep in mind and there are a few id types you have to to use to make it work okay but we will see that in the code later. Mm -hmm. So hardware we will use is quite simple. Um, ESP32 C3, mm -hmm. from that aside. Switch to the other camera. Yeah. So oh, I prepared something. Um, ESP32 C3, um, that's a module from our shop. You can also use an, an ESP32 Pico D4, that doesn't matter. So the nice thing is, for the ESP32 family, write it once, run it on many of their subfamily types, that works. Mm -hmm. um, and we use a simple DHT11 temperature sensor that is also usable, okay. usually somewhere around in the home. So mm -hmm. that's a really common thing and easy to connect. It doesn't need that much pins. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, this is to see the actual current. Um, I see. We had questions like, hey, that's Bluetooth low energy, but the ESP32 is still eating current like it's free. And while the communication is low energy, it doesn't mean that your MCU is low energy. So that's to keep in mind. Um, so that's why it's connected there. We can, <clears throat> if we have time at the end, have a look at that. Um, but to give a rough, uh, roughly estimation, with Wi-Fi enabled, it's 150, 160 milliamps peak, and with BLE transmissions, uh, we are talking about 60 to 65 milliamps running. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's still not good for battery operations, but that's more an, an thing to the to the board itself. Uh, connection diagram is quite simple. Just grab one I open. We use I open six for this on the ESP thirty two C three. Um, ground and 3.3 volt, and then the DHT11 is happy in the software also. Um, what about the same antenna for Wi-Fi and BLE? So yeah, this, what I said, this is where the coexistence mode comes into play. So the chip knows when it needs to transmit, um, this is especially for transmission, knows when it needs to transmit um, BLE or Wi-Fi packages. So if one of those tools needs to talk, the other party needs to shut up, uh, sort of. Um, um, yeah, so that's not that. I mean, on, on the ESP doing Wi-Fi and BLE, that's a different story. So it's it's not flawless on those chips. It works, but it's not flawless. Uh, we have a question. Problem encountered on a BLE design that a device after paired with PC is no longer visible to PC or mobiles. Um, yes, uh, that's something um, also interesting. Um, devices that are paired or connected to one device will may stop advertising themselves as, as free or available. That can happen. Mm -hmm. So as long as those connection exists, 
And is it, uh, as long as it's talking or connected to one point in a point-to-point -point connection, no other point will be able to find it or join it. Okay. So, yeah. That's more uh, related to the uh, uh, protocol itself at that point. Um, for our client to, to show what we or to, to display our data that we transmit, we use an ESP32 PicoD4. I think most of us have at least one of us somewhere lying around. But it's, it's not in that uncommon one. Um, Connected to it is a small, I'll put it this way, small OLED display, nice I2C OLED display, uh, 0.96 inch one, a pretty simple, pretty basic one. Uh, you also find in many, many kits. They were held cheap, um, gotten a little bit more expensive these days, but yeah, usually something like that to, to just display the data. Or you can also use with some modification of the of the software, um, also the, the VMOS Lowland was the integrated OLED. So basically the same construct, but- I see. Yeah, but the VMOS Lowland currently in our shop is at least not available, sadly, but it would, would be an, an well-priced alternative for the uh, single, single parts. Um, connection diagram is also quite simple. Uh, default I2C pins um, on the device uh, and then ground and, and power and that's it. Yeah. That's all the magic. Um, yeah, uh, code word. Somebody from Elector in the chat? Somebody from the, from the team here? If not, then I'll do it. Well, I have to. Uh, oh, where are the, ah, oh, yep. Okay, <laughs> problem solved. <laughs> um, colleagues are listening. Um, yeah, so that's uh, the way the, the demonstration is built. Quite simple, and the idea was to build it with parts you may have at home and don't need to buy separately. So that's that's the main idea at that point. And yeah, let's dive into the code. We have prepared a little something. Let me log in. And this time I need to go from presentation to camera. Who? Hope the image quality is not that bad or not as bad as on my machine. So um, for the BLE, and here we have the BLE server. So this little guy, we can connect it uh, to make the demo work. Maybe you can say something about the uh, software you are using. Um, this is, we are using the Arduino framework within Platform IO. Mm -hmm. It has the advantage that I can uh, nail the required libraries for the project. So you don't have yeah. to download them separately and try it from the headers to figure out what it is, but you can easily um, yeah, get the co code. And after that, then... Uh, should be able... It's nice if you can't see anything. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> get all the required libraries and, and uh, Bluetooth stacks. And talking of Bluetooth stacks, for the BLE one, for the ESP exists two ones. One is the BlueRoid, the official from Expressive Delivered yes. okay. um, stack, including BLE and Bluetooth Classic. And there's the Nimble stack mm -hmm. uh, from uh, ported from the Apache project. Mm -hmm. And if you only want to do Bluetooth low energy, you should really look at the Nimble stack. Um, less or well, the chances that you had got into weird problems that the stack combinations of classic and, and le may have uh, is less likely with the nimble ble stack yeah so let's go through it so you have the usual includes for the header and um the interesting magic for our server is more like here within the service uh, Unify identifier, uni, 
identifier. This is the one that's um, telling that is exactly our service or unit or our yeah. Yeah, menu dish system, yeah, restaurant sort of, I think would be the best. Um, and how did you get this number? Uh, carefully chosen to be random. Okay. Um, so there is not, no integrated um, number in, in, in the chip or something? Like, no, in, like no, a no. MAC address you have in the, in the no, network? No. Uh, the, the service IDs, um, mm -hmm. it's more likely, um, yeah, get one yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be good to go. If you want to have a, a BLE qualification after on, there's, I think, more stuff to do. And mm -hmm. there, there's a reason I haven't looked into BLE or Bluetooth for a long time, and that's mm -hmm. the, the license thing situation. Okay. Ask your lawyer mm -hmm. of trust how it currently is. Um, it's not like Wi-Fi using it for free and nobody will care. It's if you if you use Bluetooth and Bluetooth LE, there's, there's more to the story. So you just selected the same number for for both um, sketches, one one that the server will announce and mm -hmm. one that the client will listen for. Okay. If I would put two servers mm -hmm. in the room, he will just connect to the next best one he will find. Okay. If they advertise the same um, BLE service. Okay. And within. But, so in your program is no no pairing. No, no. You, you, you paired it. In, a, in advance, hard coded in Sketch. Sort of. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, listen for that specific I see. service, mm -hmm. and, there sh and then look if there are the appropriate uh, characteristics available that you can. I read. see. Um, yeah, it, it's like mm -hmm. uh, if if you are if you are going to, to look for uh, for a McDonald's, you will mm -hmm. see look if there's a, a yellow M somewhere, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. yeah, should be good to go. I see. Um, um, yep. And then it's like uh, with the characteristics on the menu dish, what, what kind of food you would like to have. Yeah, but there we have a, um, a question by Peter. Is the U UID structure mandatory? Dashes, numbers, lengths? I think so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, a way how to generate that. Mm -hmm. There are generators for this kind of stuff. I used one of those. Please don't ask me which. It's mm -hmm. a few days since I did that. Mm -hmm. I think four months? five sort of um yeah but they have to be in that format okay um yeah and then i said for the characteristics also two descriptors that say uh, one is uh, temperature one is humidity okay and for the um uh, yeah values itself they also have a kind of uuid in them how to, to access and gain access to them. But mm -hmm. details on that are inside the Bluetooth specification or BLE mm -hmm. specification, how mm -hmm. to handle that. There's a little bit more to, to how the values are generated. Mm -hmm. Is the specification uh, available for everyone? You can get access to it without mm -hmm. paying, as, as far as I, I could see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's, as I said, it's different than Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, what we are doing at this point, um, we have some callbacks on connect and on disconnect. So if somebody disconnected, disconnects, we will advertise ourselves again. As long as okay. somebody is connected, we don't do an advertise that we are there. Mm -hmm. So this is why the device will disappear after it's paired or co coupled with one another, one other device. Um, for the setup, um, Uh, yeah, should be working, that way of generation. Haven't looked into that, but should be. Um, yeah, so what we are doing at the start, we call the, uh, I'll scroll a little bit further down. Um, you have the, the usual Arduino-like um, setup at this point. Begin your serial, set up your LEDs, um, set up your DHT sensor, stuff like that, a um, little bit debug print, and then start your BLE setup. And okay. Can we have a look in just that function? Yes, mm -hmm. I think that's the, the most interesting one. What we then do is we initialize that with our server name, that's mm -hmm. 
but they are hard coded. Mm -hmm. um, they define as shown, hopefully readable shown in the stream. So that's 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 the name the device has. So it will show as DHD eleven underline ESP thirty two dash C three. Okay. As as Bluetooth device as name. We could change that to make it more or less unique. Yes. Okay. So that you can figure out which one it is if you have I see. more than one. I see. Um, we then create a server, mm -hmm. create a set of callbacks for that one, mm -hmm. and then we start to create uh, services. So this is our DHD11 service, so the, the outer shell yep. of that one. Okay. And then we start to add characteristics to this I outer see. shell. And if we are done, we say start, mm -hmm. uh, start advertising, mm -hmm. so that we once in a while send a BLE package and tell everybody, hey, we are there. Mm -hmm. Let, look what we are doing. And yeah, at that point, other devices can connect to the server. Only one or more? Only one. It's only it's one. only point to point mm -hmm. in this example. Okay. Um, another interesting part is then later on we read the sensor values from time to time. Coming back to that because it's mm -hmm. it's a little bit complex. Mm -hmm. um, we we first get this advertising notice as yeah. as the client. Yeah. And then we say, okay, we want we want to see your values, yep. and then the server sends us the values. So it's uh, not the same message. There are two types of messages. There's there's even a little bit more going on okay. in that. So okay, um, if if you really want to to, to dive into a Bluetooth a full Bluetooth uh, LE communication, there mm -hmm. are snippers around that, and there's mm -hmm. some hints in the magazine how how to build one yourself. Okay. Um, but there's a little bit more going on. You have mm -hmm. the advertisement, like mm -hmm. saying, hey, here I am. Mm -hmm. Then you have the client that says, hey, please, I'd like to connect to you. Okay. Um, what do you have? Mm -hmm. And after that, um, please give me your values. Or, okay. or you can say, hey, this is an, a characteristic. I'd like to write to it or i like to read it. So there is okay. the option that I, as a client, can pull mm -hmm. values mm -hmm. or that I can write values mm -hmm. or that I cannot get notified if something changes. Okay. That's the more interesting part. Okay. And that's what we are doing here. Um, after a certain given time, um, we can say, okay, give us the all the sensors, read the, the data. And for example, for the temperature, I can say set value mm -hmm. in the characteristics from above in the code. And then I can say notify. That means I've written a new value to that. Could be the same as the last one, but I can say, hey, everybody that's or that that one that's connected to me, please tell them that there's some something changed and what the new values are mm -hmm. for that one. Um BLE and MQTT. Um, um there's uh, and <laughs> the story gets a then, then little, little longer than, than I think we expected today. Um MQTT and BLE, um, blue, there, there is something else on top of it. And then we are talking things like six low pan and stuff like that. But that's a different webinar we are not going to do yes. today. Um, and I think then it's even more than an hour to, to go through that. Um, look at, if, if you're interested in, in how to get everything connected in a, in a smart home system, look for the meta um, standard. That's in, uh, um, intended to, to unify Zigbee, Bluetooth low energy devices, Wi-Fi devices, everything was uh, in the end talking to a broker that talks MQTT in the end. So there's more layers on top of that stack wise. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's more one. Oh, there's a nice, Nice hint in the uh, chat about generating the GUID. Uh, yeah, may have a look at that. So yeah, that's that's for the server. So we have the point where we send active notifications out at that point, and that's nice for the client. Uh, the the connected client it doesn't have to pull. New yes, values. It would gets, be a, my next question. Mm -hmm. It gets new values. Okay. It's quite interesting if you do that uh, something like that with barbecue, uh, barbecue mm -hmm. term, barbecue, barbecue, with a term, thermometer for for me barbecue mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. But whatever you would like to do. 
so that you only get a new temperature value transmitted if there's something changed, if the software says mm -hmm. there's something changed, because then on the other side, listening to a BLE connection doesn't take as much energy as actively sending a message mm -hmm. waiting for a return. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, that's quite nice on that. Um, and that yes. could be ind indeed uh, ideal for MQTT because MQTT is um, is storing uh, in some way sensor or can store sensor values. But then you need an, way. yeah. But then you need a bridge that listens to to Bluetooth. Yeah. Yes. And then you would, I think, more than go into a mesh configuration, mm -hmm. not point to point. But yeah, mm -hmm. in the end, there will be a device that listens to Bluetooth LE mm -hmm. and be connected to a network with whatever mm -hmm. Wi-Fi could be an option. And then transmit package from A to B mm. and act as a bridge. And I said at some point the ESP in that particular mode has some mm, has its minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so there's a delay five, and for this one, um, af after we do the notify. Um, the ESP needs to do some housekeeping within the Bluetooth stack, and if we don't do the delay five and give calculating time back to the Bluetooth stack, it may get into an unknown interesting stack and may get stuck and does not do anything any longer. So there are, there are rough edges. So, so to shorten that. Um, yeah, code after the webinar will be available on GitHub or if you have bought the magazine, you can download the code or if you haven't bought the magazine as, as a member, as a subscriber, um, yeah, send a mail. I got a few requests. You can download the code also. Yep, it's public. Um, I hope it's it's uh, put correctly. So yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, on the magazine website, there's the article. So yeah, I think I need to go back to camera for a moment. Or no, I can't. Um, wait. Um, yeah. So I said. It's at a certain point you just do the notification for the characteristics you do, and then it gets pushed to the client side. Mm -hmm. um, let's do a client for a short block. We are far, far within the one hour. Um, let's do the client. Let's switch back to the main camera. Then I'll prepare some things. So. Um, yeah, for the client, it's uh, a little little easier at that point. Um, client source main. We had to modify the text size a little so that you can read. Um, for the client, it's a little bit simpler and different. Mm -hmm. Um, what the client does, uh, we will skip a few things. So have a look at the code if you want to get all the complete parts. Um, we will go into the BLE setup. So it's, it's basically like on the server. We have a BLE setup function here. We will do a device initialization without a name because we don't advertise a name. We don't advertise any services. And what we then do is um, just scan for devices that transmits um, BLE advertisements. And if that scan is complete after a given time here, five seconds, we will get a callback that we jump into and we get a list with all the devices and, and services uh, found. See. So let's jump to scan complete. Um, so um, the, we don't do any of those in the callback itself, uh, like try, trying to figure out what's in there. Um, what we do is we set, just set a flag and do in our main loop then the uh, distinction um, what parts we have found and what we got. And what we do is, um, yeah, just a second. It's interesting. So we get in our loop uh, a list of, of uh, remote characteristics um, with a given set of functions. 
and then we just compare this unit or this this characteristics or unify UUID with the one we are looking for. And if we found one we are looking for, then we say, okay, please connect. Mm -hmm. And then we are just uh, asking, do you have the characteristics we are looking for? And if um, we would like to get notifications if there is something changed. So that that's that's all the magic. So um, quite simple, I think. But you have to play around with it. Um, yeah, going line by line through the code, it's um, yeah we have yeah I said a little a little late currently. If you uh, also had uh, some some templates in the online you you used. Um, yeah, there are examples mm -hmm. for for this uh, matter. Mm -hmm. So if you install the libraries for the um, stacks, there are samples included for okay. PLE and and Bluetooth Classic. Okay. So that's not that much of a problem. Mm -hmm. And after that, a little, a little bit uh, looking through the libraries and mm -hmm. maybe looking mm -hmm. for some other hints, and then you're good to go. It's it's not perfect, but on the ESP32, it's it's workable. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Sensing and transmitting data was that it's it's a nice starting point. If you have uh, other platforms or chips, are the um, libraries similar from the function it's naming or it, this is currently a little ESP specific. Okay. At some points, um, but if you look, but if you have experience with such a sketch, you can dive into other. It's, it's more like it's, easy, I yeah. think. It's more like mm -hmm. if, if you got an idea about the basics, what mm -hmm. you need to do, then going to other platforms and other stuff, it's mm -hmm. not that complicated any okay. longer. But uh, be a, um, Bluetooth Classic would be a complete other story? Would be a different story, yeah. okay. to, to say that. Um, we have prepared a little demo for mm -hmm. the Classic stuff, so mm -hmm. could also be interesting. So for the for the Classic one, or probably for the... Um, Bluetooth Classic, there are also libraries around. We come to that. Mm -hmm. um, let's go back to the present demo. We skipped a little bit. <clears throat> Another question. Have you ever uh, programmed a Bluetooth LE for smartphones on Android? Are there no. also good libraries? No, haven't, haven't done that for the for the Android phones. Mm -hmm. So, But you could, in principle, send your data also now to a smartphone with that sketch? Um, yeah, technically, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. So connect, also, yeah. Definitely mm -hmm. possible. Um, required software. That was one question. Um, if you can go to the uh, Chem Free so that we can show them the monitor. So, uh, in terms of software, what do you need? Um, ESP32, ESP32. Um, Uh, Arduino framework, and then the, uh, for example, Nimble stack for Arduino, and that's it. That's all the software you need to do to, to start with um, BLE. So that's not that much. Uh, samples are given, and Bluetooth is, 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 is a topic that's not that often used with the ESP32. Back to presentation. Yeah. Hmm. So that's from the magazine. This are um, this is the flow for that. It's a little mm -hmm. small thing, hard to read. Um, better to look that in the art up in the article, but it basically describes what the system is doing. Um, but I can try to put also the, the um, two images aside uh, to, to this code itself. So, in summary, uh, ESP32 and BLE um, short range communication, 10, 15 meters. It's not much, it's, it's not built for range. Yes. Um, short communications uh, uses definitely less energy than using Wi Fi on the chip. Mm -hmm. um, Dual mode on the ESP has it quirks, so definitely not that easy. Um, 
And to keep in mind, the ESP32 itself, the, the core architecture, mm -hmm. is not as low power as other competitors when it comes to BLE. So there are other companies around that are more focused on, on that certain uh, spec. And also with the evaluation boards, you have a lot of peripheral that consumes more energy. So it's not, in general, those are not really well suited for battery operation, at least the default boards. We can also do audio with the ESP32 and use it as a speaker. And wiring is really, really simple. Ground connection, one wire for the internal deck for the output. You can directly hook it up to a set of speaker and then you have audio and good to go. Okay. Um, the reason why I didn't, didn't use it in callbacks and interrupt routines, it can take too long to get that executed. So you may you are stuck too long in this callback, and if the callback is called from within the same thread as the BLE stack, it could be that you block the BLE stack itself. And then maybe also interesting things can happen. Don't have to, but can. Um, yeah, so a little bit annoying at that point. So yeah, Bluetooth, look for a vendor that offers a really good and well-written Bluetooth stack for that application. And yeah, there are others around, so that's for sure. Plug that off. Um, plug that in. Speaker. Not the best. So. Uh, I think we can switch cameras. Give me a second. Can we move that to this side? Plug. What can go wrong? So. So old fader. Let's see. So it's playing audio from an Android phone, uh, the intro melody of Electro Lab Talk. And um, yeah, this is just directly from the example, two lines of code. Um, that's all needed with the Arduino uh, framework. So yeah, that's more or less the small bonus track. And how to get there, it's, and what it's doing and what it's, how it's working and why Bluetooth Classic and audio is sometimes interesting to get working. Um, Bluetooth itself has, that, has a certain set of, of features and profiles. Okay. And um, yeah, we have something like um, yeah profiles. And what you may know is the hands-free profile that's usually used for um, headsets. Mm -hmm. uh, your mobile phone is connecting with that profile to your car, for example, giving two-way audio. Problem is quality is not good. So they later came up with um, A2DP. And that's offering compressed uh, audio. It's Lucy. Um, and only the SPC sideband codec is mandatory. So quality mm -hmm. is not the greatest, but mm -hmm. it's working. And you have optional codecs like MP3, AAC, um, aptX. And yeah, bit rates use 265 kilobits mm -hmm. for SPC. Mm -hmm. um, SPC has the advantage you don't need much computing power to decode it. So you can do it with simple device, quite simple devices mm -hmm. at that point. Um, and yeah, with the ESP32 and the default 
framework, only SPC is supported for the speaker. But quality is okay. Um, this demo uses the internal deck, so 8-bit audio, but for an office radio or a portable boom box, that's fully sufficient. Don't expect high quality audio. Um, but to get there, you just need um, a library, link in the slides, and you can use a set the internal deck, that's not the best one, or you can connect an I2S one. So PCM 51 or two based, you can get those on the usual stores. Then the quality gets better. And also then, yeah, I could hook up two, uh, you could hook up two channels, so get stereo out of it, it's quite nice. Um, yes, there's an interesting question by Pascal. Is it possible to restrict the access to the BLE server with a password or passphrase? Um, you can set a pin, for yeah. example, so, uh -huh. and you can even tweak your, your rights even more. So you can uh -huh. set certain rights and certain inscriptions uh, for certain characteristics. Mm -hmm. So you can have characteristics that are free to read. Mm -hmm. You can have characteristics where you need a password. You can have characteristics where you need different password for as far as mm -hmm. I understood it from the specification. So you can really fine tune the access rights for, mm -hmm. for every characteristics you have in the whole mm -hmm. BLE chain. Mm -hmm. And question is, yeah. could BLE audio be routed to I square? Yes, yes, it can, as said, and there's also some sample code that does the other way around. So that you can use it as an, yeah. not in an audio sync, but also yeah. as an audio source. So. Mm -hmm. You could build a wireless um, audio transmitter pair with an ESP32, but for the transmitter, um, there is no currently no I square S input implemented. Mm -hmm. So they use just a plain file from an internal RAM or read something from an SD card. Mm -hmm. So yeah, needs a little bit of, of work and love, and then it could be just an audio bridge. And one thing to keep in mind, Every processing of your signal adds latency and with Bluetooth mm -hmm. and depending on the codec, ideally aptX low latency profile, it's around 42 to 50 milliseconds delay you have. See. And if you do the encoding and decoding, it adds up. Mm -hmm. So just to keep that in, in mind. Okay. Yeah. But I said, look at the library, the examples are given there. Mm -hmm. um, it's just Include the library, set up the, the I2S interface as needed, um, start the service, and then you're free to use the main loop in there. It's nothing mm -hmm. you need to call. Mm -hmm. So the, the whole whole thing is running in background as a background task. Mm -hmm. um, there is, interestingly, um, oh, we have skipped that. Um, interestingly, there is a patched version of that library around. Mm -hmm. And also a patched um, IDF framework that adds aptX support. Mm -hmm. So 24 bit, 48 kilohertz, high quality mm -hmm. audio with the ESP32 SN receiver. Mm -hmm. Little bit hidden, but yeah, it's, yep. it's there, but not officially supported, but it's quite nice to see that it's possible to do it with a chip like that. Um, there is no encryption for the, for the transmission data. So after though the, the two devices have paired and connected, as far as I understood it, um, it should not be encrypted. Mm -hmm. But it might be that I'm wrong at that point. Mm -hmm. I haven't looked into that detail of the transmission for the for the audio broadcast. Uh, not broadcast for the audio uni or uh, yeah, unicast or point to point transmission. So. Yeah, but if you want to have more details about um, BLE, um, the ebook we are giving away has also a paper edition that comes with a small evaluation board. So you can try it out yourself, um, look at the Electro store. And if you want to have a small and nice evaluation board with a non expressive chip inside, with one of the Nordic ones, um, you can also look in the shop for the uh, NF52840 uh, ones. Um, also on the, is it the actual BBC Micro, are the Nordics included? 
I think I'm not sure. PVC micro two. There's there there was something. So um, yeah, PLE is is there, and I said uh, something you need to play with and or should play with if you like to. And I said for for short range data communication, a really nice uh, opportunities to do so. In general, if you want to know a little bit more about electronics, may subscribe to our newsletter. Um, may have a look at uh, Electro TV on YouTube. So we are not just doing webinars or live streams. Um, our colleagues are also doing uh, videos every week, one new video for a certain topic, certain project. So go over there. And if you like to get notified, hit the subscribe and bell button. For that channel, um, have a look at electromagazine.com for general news, latest items. And if you are not a subscriber, may have a look at the Electron Magazine. And if you don't get it in that tree form, um, we have that also as a digital yes. uh, download available. Yes. So, yeah, environmentally friendly, 100% recycled electrons so and if you like to see the past or even more webinars um, electronmagazine.com slash webinars you will find all the ones that we had done in the past they will be available at a given point on youtube and also you will see upcoming webinars yes for example the webinar in December, I think it was December the 8th, mm, um, there yeah. we have our um, November, December heft at the news and sales. And um, yeah, about, it will be about production and components. We are currently finishing it. It's uh, nearly the printer, printer's press. Mm. So yeah, watch out. Um, and this webinar will be moderated by our colleague Clemens. And I together heard... with an uh, external author. Yep, I heard David. something. Yep. And the next webinar, not bound to the magazine, but also quite interesting, is October the 20th. That will yes. be introduction to solid state lightning. So mm -hmm. LED or everything that's not with a piece of glowing uh, wire inside, but something else, um, that will be the topic. So look out. Uh, may go to the webinar page, register for that one. Um, yeah, our colleague Clemens uh, will be looking forward to see you there. And from our side, I would say uh, for the moment, we are now a little over an hour. It's getting dark. I think it's time. Dark and rainy out there in Aachen. Yep. Yeah. Really November weather. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But well, yeah, hope. You enjoyed this little short trip through Bluetooth Low Energy. If you like to know more about the set, there are books available. May you are one of the lucky five winners of the PDF edition that then gets delivered directly to you. And for the rest of the week, stay healthy, stay creative. See you soon. Bye bye.